All right, what's up, y'all? Ticker fan here. As I was about to tell today's video, here to ask what actually creates the skill gap in NBA 2K23? What makes someone better than the next guy? And as you can see in today's video, what makes me better than this player right here? And to be honest with you, there's probably not a whole lot. <laughs> now, there are a lot of things under the hood that I think actually matter quite a bit outside of 1v1 between IQ, chemistry, teamwork, just how adaptable you are to certain other people's styles as well, maybe how analytical you are about studying people's builds based off their build name on the intros all types of stuff like that little things you can pick up on but when it comes to just stick skill what makes one player better than the next one now in this year's game in my opinion the dribbling is as basic and low skill gap as it ever could possibly be as you can see he comes out there with a very basic luca step back that almost everybody uses you're gonna see him go for that little ball hand stop and go and then he just ends up just trying to pull the shot from the top and can't hit it now that is Part of the skill gap, obviously, is still shooting. I 100% I will advocate for the fact that some people are just better shooters than other. And obviously, you know, me, myself included, I'm not exactly the greatest shooter in the game by any means. I definitely think I can hit from the top with a lamello base, and it's about as simple as that. And not to mention, I could still fade a little bit here and there. But as far as contested shooting, I'm not exactly the greatest or anything like that. But this game's dribbling, it doesn't quite matter because, to be honest with you, you can still move extremely good off those ball hands, hezzies, and just stop and goes and stuff like that. Not to mention, this. This is more of a knowledge thing right here this right here does not take any skill to do these acrobatic layups this is me going with a horrible take on this euro and i'm like oh my god this is gonna be so so bad so i gotta hit this little switch up as you can see and it switches the ball on the other hand and it negates contest much better than a regular layup would that is more of a no and intelligence thing rather than it is actual skill because that doesn't to be honest you take any skill at all to do same with as you're going to see a lot of the drip moves i'm doing right here with this little walk back into the just sit here and wait and then run ball hand and to stop and go it's the least skill gap dribble dribbling we've probably ever seen in any 2k and i've already mentioned that but it's really tough to see man but that really begs to ask the question what creates the skill gap and the skill gap too is really to be honest with you defense on ball defense some people really suck at this stuff in this game if we're being completely honest and really in a game where you know for a fact that the ball hand movement is extremely good you should definitely be leaning toward that ball hand way more than not i'm going to be showcasing that in today's video too i guess a different player that we're going to be showcasing once again quote unquote skill gap of me versus them and again i'm not here to toot my own horn way too hard or anything like that but one thing i do think i've picked up on is defense 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 and i'm still learning i'm still studying that stuff when it comes to comp pro aim etc etc but anyway again cutting off that ball hand stuff but to be fair honestly this is where another thing with defense comes into play because even if you do it like honestly let me just break this one down from the beginning so i gotta talk about the ball hand situation and this is where rafer alston even becomes even less skill based the signature size up i'm using because it switches the ball hand so quickly from left to right to left to right to left to right and i can just boom pick a ball hand off either way and just run simple as that pick a ball hand to the left boom run or i can stop survey the defense see if he's backing up too far i can shoot it if he's not boom i can just move to the left now he's chasing because he didn't wall off that ball hand side either so now that he's chasing and i know that he's going to recover i snap it down down to the right right there when i'm moving to the left and boom it snaps into the other hand and now as he's chasing boom we just loop around him for the least skill thing in the game as well quick drops tough 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 to guard tough to really just process as a defender in general you really have to funnel people in and make sure you can stop them just based off of i really do think taking away someone's hand and just making it so they have to go one way is really the key in defense in this year's game i think if you know you're gonna get beat to the right yet you're taking away the left really hard it at least means that you know you're gonna have to recover to the right extremely hard and if they get you on a string like that oh well it is what it is but i don't like this head up defense stuff that he was doing right there now he takes away my right so now he is taking away that ball hand but again now i have to kind of just maneuver this stuff into the right situation and again it's extremely hard to do the skill gap in dribbling is not there it's just so tough to deal with in this one-on-one -on -one, like really open court so to say so if you also want to maybe throw another thing into the skill gap and again a little stop and go you can see how frustrated he is by just giving up on the play not even going for the chase down but if you want to add another thing into maybe the skill gap orientation of the game yeah, I would definitely argue off ball defense and just in general, the amount of bait you can play when in this, in this extremely high ISO heavy game where essentially if you fill in two more characters to the court right here and someone's in this left corner, someone's in this right corner to front the corners and bait a little bit, force the, force the point guard to pass a little bit and maybe just force them to really think they need a back door and stuff like that as well. Off ball defense goes a long way in this game. Same with maybe you have an elite defender in this corner, you could take away his left, funnel the guard to the right, and then boom, he can step out the corner and help in those situations. But again, that's more for team-based things. And I would really like to just c condense it down as 1v1 court because there are people out there who don't
don't play with teammates or anything like that. So just talking about point guard offense and on-ball defense is probably the easiest thing I can talk about in this game. Now, as you can see, contested shooting or just anticipating a non-contested shot is a pretty skill-based thing as well. But honestly, after hopping on these shooting builds and stuff like that, it's not that hard. But I don't want to, you know, run a, run this track over and over again. I just talked about that in yesterday's video all over the place. But open shooting is pretty easy. So let's talk about that too, though. The skill gap is also your internet reliability as well because if your latency is low and then the consistency of your latency as well like for instance there's someone out there that probably has 80 millisecond latency at their best and sometimes is even down to like 140 or something like that that is almost un unplayable to be honest with you and it's really hard to shoot the ball with that so really how much skill gap is there truly in 2k besides the fact that my latency in this game because i'm playing at like 2 a.m and my internet is really good around that time was around like 12 latency so i'm really blessed with that internet quality to be honest with you get at the end of the day only shot one three-pointer the problem is i really do think i'm gonna make a lot of those three-pointers if he leaves me and he knows that it's gonna be a tough time too so he tries to play a little bit of a semblance of defense but honestly his best bet would probably just be to back off and make me shoot the ball but then what happens if i go five for five or i just continue to just make every shot and now i'm getting threes instead of twos so it's really a tough conversation to be had as far as how to defend people properly in this game because you don't want to give them free dunks i promise you that you don't want to just be getting quick dropped all over the place on a 100 percent rate where you're never going to kick them out of the dunk you can't chase them down you can't do anything like that that's why i say i don't like to play super high and tight defense because then people will get by you but i also don't like to play that super bet super heavy backup defense where people get easy threes i think you want to keep an arm's distance and take away one side extremely hard but that is the skill gap in this game if you ask me is defense on ball d off ball d and just maybe to have some of the basics down on offense where you just know about the stop and go the stop and shoot stuff like that maybe just i don't know just in general the fact that you can be a stationary player yet if the ball is in your left hand you can just boom sprint to the left simple as that it's a really stupid lack of skill gap dribble game but we've already talked about that a lot and also this is this player's build right here it's very similar to my build as far as the driving dunk is nearly the same the three pointer is only two lower the ball handle pass accuracy and speed with ball are all the same the interior defense is nearly resemblant as well with mine being 67 his being 70 and same with my primdy and steel are the exact same thing as his the only thing my build is extremely different at than his is i have 85 offensive rebound with 27 block whereas he has 28 offensive rebound with 87 block but you would argue for the 1v1 court that the block rating is even more important to have than the offense rebounding not to mention my speed is like 80 as well or 82 something like that and not that this means anything to be honest with you but he has a 77.5 win percentage i have nearly a 90 i think 91 something like that but again not that that stuff really matters that much i'm just saying that's your kind of difference between the two players essentially and maybe one is just better off for 1v1 court and the other is maybe more of a lockdown team player you would think that's me mr 25 three-pointer and can't really do anything with the ball in his hands but anyway into the next game i'm going to showcase obviously someone who is level 19 in the 91 overall and no diss to him obviously it's clear he has a youtube channel i'm gonna shout him out for this just off the fact that i have him in the video it's a goat youtube shout out to him but anyway my whole point here i want to showcase another thing that i would obviously entail as skill gap now i want to talk about this because i don't typically upload videos of people that are 91 overall or maybe you know less time spent on the game or just clearly aren't quite as good on the game to be honest with you and what i wanted to showcase is the simple aspect of defense that you can do to improve being able to beat people who aren't exactly good at the game as you can see i'm seeing left hand and he's going for that stop and go off rip i'm already seeing that now i'm cutting off baseline and he is actually going to get a bucket on me even through all this as you can see he kind of gets past me right there but i'm able to cut him off late now i'm watching that left hand he's actually out of adrenaline off the fact that he is doing this ball hand burst so so much and i even like back it up into that try and cut him off but he just kind of glides through it either way though you should not be flustered about something like this and be super irritated and like getting super heated off the fact that you know you're gonna be able to defend him if you're just ready for this ball hand stuff now i'm just sitting here i'm as you can see now this actually was kind of nuts i'm not gonna lie to you but i'm sitting here sitting back i'm ready for this ball hand run right here if he looks like he's gonna pull up and shoot i'll close the gap a little bit go for the contest but as you can see i predicted that he was gonna do this long run to the right off once again standing still and running to that ball hand so now i go for that blitz right there unbelievable to not get that by the way i actually hit my x button and i guess it just doesn't even go for the steal then he gets another bucket but 
I want to make the point of this gameplay right here. The fact that if you are actually going against a player that is pretty bad at the game and all they can do is just do the same same side ball hand run, you should be able to defend this pretty easily, to be honest with you. It, you just got to take, you got to make people take the next step into their gameplay that they probably don't even have. Whether it's the fact that some people come out here and just do this basic stuff right here, like run to the right, or at least force them to flick their stick and move to the left. Once you see that adjustment, then account for it. Maybe if, maybe just play the mental mind game of the people that you're playing against. Not to mention, if we're being completely honest, I think you should absolutely make the person prove that they can shoot the ball consistently from the beginning of a game, whether it's 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, anything like that. The last thing you want to do is respect someone's jump shot way too much. And this game has so much rim running in it just off the fact that if you respect their jump shots, they get extremely easy easy dunk opportunities like if he steps up way too high on this i'm just gonna end up flying right by him simple as that and again you don't want to give people opportunities like this you want to make them shoot the ball you want to force them to actually show you that they're going to earn those shots consistently and again keep an arm's distance because you don't want to just give them a wide open three-pointer like this or anything like that because obviously a decent player is probably going to punish you for just giving them a wide open three-pointer and obviously that actually goes a long way for the takeover which then makes it even more makeable for me to make shots like this but again you don't want to make it this easy on people, really. You don't want to make it so easy to the point where you're all the way up on them and you give them a free quick drop. You also don't want to make it so easy to the point where you're just giving them a free three-pointer either. You want to play mind games with people, make them actually think, make them play with one hand tied behind their back. Do something to take away at least something right here. Like if you take away this right from me, at least it's going to force me to move to the left and I'll have to either drive off it and you can close the gap back or you can chase me to the three if I do that. I just really encourage you guys, if you're playing defense in this game, to not guard head up. You do not want to give someone the left and the right and back and forward to go. You have to at least take something away because I really do believe, like I said, the whole point of the video is the skill gap is in defense in this year's game, if I'm really being completely honest. And I know some people are going to dispute that too. They're going to be like, oh, well, what about the pure locks that just came out here and they spammed X button all season one, two, and three. I understand that to an extent, but honestly, if you're playing by that logic and you're playing like a squad game where you have a point guard lock and center and you're going against a point guard lock and center, maybe your lockdown should just be better at doing it than the other lockdown, to be honest. I mean, it's just the truth. Anyway, to come back to the gameplay side of things, again, he's just sagging off super high, super heavy, ends up running up late, but obviously you can't really afford to do that, so there's another wide open three-pointer, and again, with the fact that, let's talk about this too, this is really stupid that it's even the case, the fact that Agent 3 pops up on literally dribble moves like that, it's kind of crazy, I don't think Agent 3 should pop up on standstill shots at all, because you're going to see it pop up again, because obviously it activates off any dribble move you do anything so I'm, I'm just not a big fan of that personally he actually plays great defense right here i let me, let me explain this real quick i thought i was playing some mind games with him and this is what i think 1v1 truly is it's just all mind games you can see i i feel like i have an easy dunk right here but i'm just going to assume that he's going to go for the chase down or jump on the block right here and then i'll just get a wide open close shot but actually he ends up just getting right in front of me and i kind of account for that he would have already flown, flown past me and i would have got a chase down off that but Great play by him, honestly. But again, I'm going to be really trying to take away that ball hand stuff 100%. Close the gap on the drive, whether he goes for the dunk or not. Same thing right here. Obviously, he's backing up, so I'm taking away the left. Ball switches to the right hand. Now it's back into his left, so we're playing the left again. I mean, it's just, honestly, I know in real life basketball, they tell you not to watch the ball. They tell you to watch his body or anything like that, whether you want to watch like upper body, lower body, whatever the case may be. But <laughs> honestly, in this game, watch the ball. Absolutely watch the ball, because wherever the ball is, that is where they're going. Simple as that. This game is not very good with offhand dribble moves. I mean, if you have the ball in your left hand, you cannot run to the right until you put the ball into your right hand. That's kind of just how this game works. And it, it's not really great, but honestly, that's kind of always how 2K has been. You kind of have to put the ball in the other hand. There's no, I mean, if you think about it in real life, you could cross over really quick from left hand to right hand. It's about as simple as that. But in this game, it just takes so long and slow. And obviously speed boosting in this game, where you do it, where you're, it's in your right hand and you just go right, the speed boosting is so crazy and so quick that it just doesn't really account for real life logic. Right here, you can see though, we're, got, we're popping out with that James Harden hop jumper. It's honestly not even that hard to do. You just have to hold down on your stick in one direction. That right there though is hard to do if we're being completely honest. I know that's the reason a lot of people don't do it, but ball in left hand, hold down and right on my right stick. And again, I'm not sitting here like talking about this stuff and dribbling, like sitting here talking about like this is something super crazy, like I even shot off or anything like that. But obviously the move itself is not hard to do. 
and then to really chain things together though and have an idea for how to get to the hoop maybe is a little bit different you can see i set everything up to try and go for a behind the back to make him think that i'm moving left right here and get his body moving left and then when i close the gap right here to behind the back it and go to the right and i get past him off that but now if i can't get a quick drop because you can see he bodied me off most people right here are kind of boxed, if we're being completely honest. Because if you go for an X button dunk right here or up on the right stick, assuming I'm going to get a quick drop, you're just going to get blocked by any mediocre defender, really. So having this in your bag goes a long way, to be honest with you. It goes a long, long way. So that is another thing that truly is skill gap in this game. Same way fading is, same way even just standstill shooting is. Anything to do with obviously contested shooting or contested finishing just is skill gap. But the last thing you want to do in this game is maybe be in a situation where you were playing bad defense right here like let me just cook up an example for you the last thing you want to do is maybe like respect my three-pointer way too much to the point where i just get an easy quick drop rim run right here and i don't have to do this dunk meter i just hold up on my stick and i can just hold it up on my stick for 20 seconds for all i care obviously it's going to go in it doesn't matter the timing it doesn't matter anything like that at all so you want to make sure you have people earn shots in this game whether it's shooting whether it's fading whether it's dunking anything like that do not give people easy freebie stuff anytime at all because this stuff people don't people don't do very often for being completely honest so anyway that is my take on the skill gap in this game the truth behind it i really do feel like in the smaller condensed courts like 1v1 2v2 and somewhat 3v3 it's really about defense knowing how to play people's ball hand being able to take that away bump steals all types of stuff like that communication with your teammates obviously i mean some people might think that's not a skill but being a leader or at least a good communicator definitely is a hard thing to do for a lot of people out there 100 percent and to to see the game already like before it even happens and kind of predict things and tell your teammates what to look for and where you're taking certain things away if you're taking away his right to tell them to play your left if you're on the game talking to your teammates or your friends whatever it may be and you're taking this seriously and you want to be able to win then i do think communication goes a long long way but the conversation i wanted to be had real quick is to talk about on the other hand of things i think when it comes to the fives modes like rec center and pro-am and stuff like that i think offense it truly is the skill gap the more players there are on the court the harder it is to be a scorer or a passer or an offensive player in general obviously on the ones offense is so easy and the de and defense is 100% the skill gap on ones same with twos I really do feel like that 100% 3v3 is about as 50 50 as it can go offense isn't a cakewalk but defense definitely isn't either for that matter I think it's really 50 50 on that stuff and then for 5v5 defense is pretty easy all things considered and then offense is really the the tough tough scrape things by and really make them work as you can that's why a lot of teams rely and live off fast break to be honest with you because their offense really in the half court isn't that good they can't create offense they don't have chemistry they don't have good communication on pick and roll or just in general can't really create like that in a five out with five defenders on the court so really that's just the truth so i hope you guys enjoyed if you have anything you want to add to the feedback of this video as far as the skill gap in your opinion feel free to leave them i know even you can make the case for things like rebounding screen setting i've seen bad centers in this game that literally just sit there and hold their b button the whole time because they think they're a popper they think they are good spacing for their team they think if they just sit there and hold screens with their b button and then they can just float around the three-point line that it won't hurt their guard but Boy, have I seen some people get blitzed in this game off the, 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 the popper centers just holding their B button and then boom, backside defender just whams their X button straight into the point guard and balls out. Simple as that because the big man doesn't know how to slip. So there's a lot of things that are skill gap in 2K. It's just that in a dumbed down condensed version like this, it makes it feel like it's just stop and go. I quick drop, I dunk, I shoot the ball from top wide open. But really, that's just because if you're playing against bad players, they don't know how to defend stuff like that. And, or... Honestly, for that matter, all you have to do is just be a little bit, like, informed. I mean, I make a lot of videos explaining stuff like this as far as how to defend certain things, how to attack certain things, uh, even in Pro-Am, how to go at certain defenses and stuff like that. We make all types of breakdown videos at the end of all those vids. So, if you take 2K seriously, I do encourage you to at least learn a little bit and maybe think ahead, essentially, I guess. Whether it's in the game and you want to predict what they're going to do, or if you want to just lab things out a little bit, learn how to fade, learn how to shoot, learn how to use the dunk meter. All these things can go a long, long way. This game has a lot of potential for you. You just have to be able to take advantage of it. So, anyway, I saw the video. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, for to drop a like, sub for new to I'm noties. All good stuff. And like always, try this one to 2,000 likes. Made it to the end of the video. Put LA in the comments search port mail through, or put gap in the comments as well. But anyway, 
that's all i hope you guys enjoyed we're gonna get back to the tier list videos now after this i hope you guys are still in tune with that it looks like the other one didn't really do too good with the views but i do want to at least still put those things out to once again inform people of what really to look out for for badges which ones are good stuff like that so we got the shooting playmaking and defense still coming up I obviously drop the finishing if you guys want to check that out as well but other than that we might get into some pro-am gameplay again i might be using like this build as well in the five out pretty soon i'm looking forward to that a good bit i just got to put together the squad a little bit and get the get the builds all figured out but Anyway, that's all. Hope you all enjoyed. And that, take these man. Peace.